This woman is trying to tame the tech giants. Margareta Vestaga, the EU's infamous antitrust boss. How did I manage? You can manage the most daring tasks if you dare. Go, go, go. If you want to change the world, you need to be in the world. Margrethe Vestager is a leader who is admired and feared at the same time for taking up the fight against big tech companies. As the EU's competition commissioner and executive vice president responsible for digital, she's considered to be one of the most powerful women in Europe, one who made it all the way to the top. Around the world, women still face sexism, difficulties in managing work and family life, and the gender pay gap, to name just a few obstacles, because the world of politics is still male-dominated. More than half of the world's population is female, but women only hold just over a quarter of seats in parliaments worldwide. And it looks much worse at the top. Currently, only 23 of 193 UN member states have women presidents or prime ministers. Germany is one of them. After more than 15 years in office, Chancellor Angela Merkel's era is soon coming to an end. She is the first woman ever to hold the post and still an exception here in Germany. That's why we want to talk to powerful women in politics. Which obstacles did they face on the way to the top? What can we learn from them? And why is it so crucial that women's interests are represented at the top? Margrethe Vestager is the EU's competition commissioner. Some call her the world's most famous regulator because she's responsible for competition and digital affairs. With size comes responsibility. Uh, with size also comes economic power for some companies to dominate markets in ways that threaten fair competition. She brought antitrust charges against Google, ordered Amazon to pay back hundreds of millions of euros in taxes, and with a new initiative she wants to crank up the pressure on companies like Facebook. A proposal that could revolutionize the internet, some say. For that, she's been dubbed a giant killer, dragon slayer and Google's worst nightmare. For imposing penalties on US companies, the former US president called her the tax lady. Vestager has received a lot of hatred for her work, but she continues to follow her mission, to level the playing field. I think it comes with the job. Because what I identify with is to enable people. What, what, the, the mission that, that I've always been on into is to say, can I enable other people to see that they have a chance, that they want to take this chance, that they want to make the most of it. And of course, in particular, people and smaller businesses, people who may not have you know, too much to begin with smaller businesses who really thrive and to need some space in order to scale up and be successful. Despite her successes, Vestager has also faced setbacks. A billion euro fine against Apple was later annulled. She says that without proper regulation, tech giants are becoming too powerful and threatening democracy. Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft and Apple, the largest US tech companies, are very male. Not even a third of their leadership position are held by women. Because, you know, I came from the Danish parliament and Danish government, which is not completely gender balanced, but where you, act, you do have quite a lot of women. And I've seen different genders, different generations shaping a society. And now when I look at big tech and see how it's shaping society, and it's so male-dominated. I just think, wow, we need change. We wouldn't accept it for a quarter of an hour if a government looked like that or a parliament looked like tech looks today. And, and you know, I find that as an encouragement because if you want to shape the world, of course you need to invite genders on board, different generations on board. Mm -hmm. 
Vestager now had the power to shape the future for younger women. She describes herself as an introvert, as once shy girl. How did she find the necessary strength to become a public figure? Well, first and, and foremost, I realized that if you want to change the world, you, want, you need to be in the world. So it's, uh, it's a side effect that you need to come out there, you need to engage with people, you need to say who you are. And I tried to learn by overcoming, you know, smaller obstacles and then bigger obstacles and then yet bigger obstacles by starting like in primary school, raising my hand and say, maybe I could rec represent us in this classroom uh, in our uh, student uh, council. And you know, it went well. And when you have a small success, then on that you can build the next success. I think the, the most obvious thing to do is to, to bring yourself out there, not to wait for someone to ask you. Uh, because if no one ever asks you, you may never be able to, to engage and achieve what you want to achieve for yourself and for other people. So I think the first thing is to say, I will take these steps and then never refuse an, a, an opportunity. There is these stereotypes that men, if they can, you know, tick two out of seven boxes, they say, wow, this is made for me. And women say, oh, I only tick seven out of seven boxes. Maybe I'm not quite qualified. And I think one has to say, no, I may not tick all the boxes, but I'll give it a try. And the worst thing that can happen usually is a hurt vanity. But you don't die and you recover and then you try again. Go, go, go. And second, help each other. It's really important to help each other. Because sometimes, you know, there will be attacks and there will be stupid things and hurtful things that if you engage online and there we need each other. Vestager is one out of 13 female commissioners in the EU. The first commission in 1958 was an all-male affair. Now almost half of the commissioners are women. Is there a difference between male and female leadership? I think it gets increasingly difficult uh, to say if there is a difference, because I think in the beginning, when very few women uh, were uh, holding powerful positions, they were very much like men because otherwise you would never survive. Now we are more, but, but still not in balance. So I think you see more different ways of being a woman with power, but you don't see the full potential yet. Uh, I tend to, to think that with, with more women in the room, uh, you get a different sort of game when it comes to hierarchy. Uh, you get a different uh, way of discussing things. Uh, discussions usually become shorter and, uh, and the power game not as intense. Maybe these are my prejudices. You once said women do not have to imitate men when they go into politics, but they should dare to be women. What did you mean by that? Well, it is as if, as if there is this sort of power uniform, which is a male suit. And, uh, and you're supposed to dress like a man, talk like a man, cut your hair like a man, uh, in order to be part of the power club. But the point of, of being more diverse and exercising power is, of course, that power should change. So you should not just be the same, not just put on sort of the equivalent pin skirt uh, to the suit, uh, not just, you know, get rid of color and and start imitating, also because men knows very well that you're not a man. So why bother? And then you can bring much more into the power game. You can make it broader, you can make it more diverse, you can make it more accessible if you remain uh, who you are and that you're different. Angela Merkel has said she wouldn't call herself a feminist. Do you consider yourself a feminist? Interesting reaction. I 
Also, die Geschichte des Feminismus ist eine, bei der gibt es Gemeinsamkeiten mit mir und es gibt auch solche, wo ich sagen würde, da gibt es Unterschiede. Und ich möchte mich auch nicht mit einem Titel schmücken, den ich gar nicht habe. Yes, I do. Because for me, feminism means equal opportunity. And it's for everyone. It's for men as well as women. Because it will serve men as well as women when we have equal opportunities and we have a balanced representation. Because then also being a man can be so much more than a stereotype. And of course, being a woman can be so much more than being a stereotype. Ich habe keine Angst. Wenn Sie finden, dass Sie eine bin, stimmen Sie ab. Okay. What I admire in her is that she's so calm, she's so considered, and, and yet she seems to be listening to all the things going on around her, all different opinions coming to the table, and only when, you know, everything has been put to the table, then she says, well, maybe this is the way forward. And I think that is a, that's a very good approach, because that creates ownership for the solutions that we find, but also it's probably better solutions. They have met on several occasions. Well, we talked about her office, how she decorated her office and, and the views of her office. This is one of the things I myself really, um, I put an effort when people come to my office that they meet part of me. They see that I appreciate the color and uh, a piece of art on my walls and all the photographs of my family and my golden retriever and so that you that you get personal because holding power is not about being a technician it's about being a human being Vestager went into politics in her early 20s for the Danish Social Liberal Party she held several ministerial posts and was the first female minister to have a baby while in office. Well, it was not the first time someone became a parent, because obviously uh, a lot of male ministers before me had become a parent while being a, a minister. But it was the first time that a, a woman uh, as a minister gave birth. And it was a bit sort of people were, well, of course it's fine, kind of all right, but can it work? And you know, if I had a, a piece of legislation in, uh, in the assembly hall and the little one needed uh, to eat, I had to go ask each speaker if I could be allowed to leave the room for a quarter of an hour while having someone sitting in there for me. So, you know, nowadays, how did I manage? But, you know, you can manage the most, you know, daring tasks if you dare. Now more female politicians are open to bringing their kids to work or even breastfeeding in Parliament. Vestager has three daughters and has managed to juggle family and career. Men in politics, on the other hand, are rarely asked about how they combine having a family and a job. You know, I think it's really a pity that my male colleagues are not invited to discuss these things because it's a thing that everyone will have to consider. You know, of course, I have a job and, and a lot of hours go into that and that has been so for all of my life. But, you know, many people have that kind of jobs and have to juggle how to make sure that you, you get, give your kids what you want to give them and you have a presence while at the same time engaging in your job. So it's a really important discussion. And it's not just for women to decide how to do this. It is for both of us. I, I, I would invite more men as, as fathers, as, as uncles, as cousins to come into this debate. Do we need quotas in business and in politics? I have come to think so. Um, when I was younger, I said, oh, no, 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 quotas, this is just for fish. Uh, and, uh, of course, if you are clever and hardworking and talented, you will get your way. Then I realized that men have had informal quotas for hundreds of years, uh, informal quotas of 95, 98 percent, and it has worked so well for them. So if we really want to change things, of course, we also need quotas for women. And men should just be happy that we settle for 50-50 instead of having 70% just for a couple of decades. 
but we still have very far to go before we have um, equal representation when it comes to power. You may be in politics, uh, you may be on the social committee, but only when you're also balanced in the economic committee, we will see that things are shifting. Vestager works long hours. She says cooking, baking and sewing help her cope with the stress and knitting elephants. Well, I knit because it keeps me grounded. And you know, I can control this itch to look at my phone. So keep it in the back. Um, and elephants, because I really like them. You know, they're, they're big, they're strong, grounded, and they live in a community that is led by a female. A high-profile politician, a mother, a feminist who stands up for fair play and the balance of power, and a strong leader who is not afraid to show emotion. Because, as she told us, holding power is about being a human being. And what is your strategy for overcoming obstacles to achieve your goal? Let us know and make sure to check out our video on Svetlana Tikhanovska, a woman who dared to take on an authoritarian leader in Belarus. Thanks for watching.